on the on the full journey hopefully hopefully it's of interest to everyone um, so these are some of the areas we should cover um, Dunbar's numbers applied to scaling engineering teams I don't know if anyone's heard of that but we'll come on to that can autonomy be dangerous question mark um, why being a tech leader takes a master's in marketing and a degree in sales I think we were just talking about some of that in the terms of communications and process will kill you monitoring won't now that's uh, there's going to be some contentious points in there I think but uh, let's see um, so um, this is me this is my background uh, engineering in in, interestingly, in every single role I've ever done, I've been an engineer and a manager in them companies. So I've kind of always gone back to writing code because that's what I love. But um, unfortunately, careers tend to push you in certain directions for some people. Um, I, I've been at just I was at Just Eat while we were a little small firm, and we grew into the mammoth uh, FTSE 100 uh, company that it became. So really good experience there. I learned lots in that journey and, um, and I saw lots of other consultancies come in and start telling, telling us how to do it and I was like wait a minute I, I think I know how to do it better than you so, so I started the consultancy. Uh, so, um, so Build Circle, me and Henry from Build, uh, also worked at Build Circle, we founded Build Circle um, and, then, uh, and then I my first gig I got um, I thought I'd put my headphones on, focus on Build Circle, uh, writing some code at Clearbank, and then and then I'm and now I'm CTO. So that didn't go quite to plan, but I'm very happy with the outcome. Um, but yeah, so here we are, at Clearbank days. Um, when I joined, we had a fairly small permanent team. The team that bootstrapped it made it um, made us get our regulatory license. Um, but now we're over 310 people in technology and we're launch currently launching our bank in Europe, etc. So some really good stuff happened. Um, who is Clearbank? I don't know. Has people heard of Clearbank here? A few hands, a few hands. So if you're, if you're not in the fintech space, you might not have heard of us. And, and if you've never worked in banking, you've probably never heard of a clearing bank. But we're the first clearing bank in 250 years. Um, so really shaking that space up hopefully and we're enabling financial freedom for for lots of people by helping fintechs be able to operate by uh, sharing our regulatory oversight and things like that so some of our some of our customers here on the right i won't go into every single one of them but really doing some really good stuff we've got over 200 customers and um yeah really positive trend so um Alla in my team she um, she did a conference uh, fast flow and some of you may have attended but she did a talk about how we've adopted team team APIs and how, how great that's going um, when when we got back um, the team were like well wait a minute was it like what was all that you just presented that is uh, it's not quite right um, <laughs> so um, she did say we are still on the journey and that so that was the key point um, we uh, we are trying to do it we are not necessarily succeeding at every point but uh, we are on that journey so um, let's talk about Dunbar's numbers who has anyone heard of Dunbar's numbers before oh, okay everyone all right, I'll shut up then uh, maybe, uh, no but let's uh, uh, so key key things is uh, and I've tried to map this to the startup to scale up to beyond enterprise uh, kind of thing. And this is what I saw, right, at, at, um, at Just Eat and, and at Clearbank, when you're in that early startup phase, 15 to 50, and you're down the pub every night with everyone you work with, and you're dealing with on-call issues in the pub, and them sort of activities are going on. It's a really fun environment, and stuff just gets done because everyone's pulling together, right? You're all going in the same direction. You use relationships to get stuff done. You don't need process. And that's really useful. Um, but then suddenly you start having success and you start hiring more people and, and it's really hard to keep them connections going and, uh, and the bills at the pub or the bar or wherever you're going, a restaurant, uh, they just get too big so you can't keep bringing everyone there. Um, and, and then you start going further and further down this line and to the point where you've actually got people in your own team, you don't even know who they are. 
and uh, you're questioning like who, like what, who, what is this person doing in this meeting and you, that you, they started yesterday or something like that. Um, yeah, so you get really, really questionable uh, kind of ability to have them relationships and you need to really kind of embrace a new, a new, new style and approach. So, um, oh, jump into head to so, so that's what I'm going to talk about now is uh, what journey for us at ClearBank and how we're facing some of them challenges. So, I talked about is autonomy dangerous? So, too much autonomy equals cognitive overload, right? I think that's uh, uh, cognitive overload is talked quite a lot in team topologies. Um, we have seen that at ClearBank. Uh, we basically went to this, when I joined, we was like, we're going to have autonomous teams that can do everything. And they're doing their own DevOps, they're, they're launching their own things into production, great stuff. Go, went really, went really well, like really successful. And uh, I, I got accolades and become the CTO and, and it was great, a great outcome, right? Challenge is, as you start scaling, that gets more and more complicated and, and suddenly, you got all these people with perceived autonomy doing lots of different things and, and, and wanting, oh, we're going to launch Cosmos DB over here and we're going to use this different DB over here. And, and you need to start bringing the reins in. So we scaled very fast, but autonomy became a bit of a virus for us, right? It basically started causing more problems than it was adding, um, which, which, uh, wasn't the case when we could have lots of personal conversations and relationships with people. We could do that and have that autonomy. So there's probably uh, lots of nuance in this, this, uh, <laughs> this slide, uh, but I'll, I'll carry on, right? So, so what did we do? Um, that next step for us was to explore the DevOps space, right? the classic create some DevOps teams, uh, uh, like create some teams which are fun enabling teams uh, which, were, which were fundamentally helping other teams like be the best version of themselves, taking a bit of that load off of them. Um, the problem is, is we're, they're only cleaning up the mess. So they're basically your teams are already created a Cosmos DB. They've already gone off and created all this new stuff. And, uh, and, and ad actually, when you start getting to this sort of skies, you've also got a bit of a churn for your talent. You're, you've got suddenly people coming and going. They made this decision to use a database, which no longer they're no longer here, and they don't have to live with it anymore. Um, and so, so you start getting these teams in place. So we put an infrastructure team in, a data team, a security, an ops. Um, so teams focused to help the product families. We call them product families. So that, that, to, the value streams get get to success. But this was our next problem. Them team, even if they started getting ahead of it, and we started to write that down about what we want the world to look like a little bit, and we started to adopt our ADRs and things like that at this point, but our problem was um, poor documentation created cognitive overload now. Um, this was generated by uh, Dali AI. I was really, I was, re I just typed in like a brain exploding with a nuke, and that's what I got. <laughs> like, and uh, it was. Um, so, so Spotify terminology, golden path, like no one was following it. Um, everyone was still not finding the right documentation and still thinking they had autonomy, right? So, um, and the reality was that our golden path wasn't fit for purpose. Like we didn't had we were, the things we were saying, these are the, this is what it looks like. They weren't interesting enough. They weren't sexy enough to the tech engineers. So, so we kind of had to keep, we had to, we had to take a big look at that. And, and, and we kept growing. And I, I don't know if anyone's noticed, I keep putting like little, little like accolades to ClearBank in the corner. There, that's, that's just, uh, yeah, but um, <laughs> uh, the most, um, uh, yeah, so there's a few, a few uh, Matthew Skeleton team topology. So, so now we're like nearly 500 people in the company as wide, right? So really hard to get that all, all get everyone working and pulling in the same direction without documentation. So we started creating platform teams. So we started creating, we created an infrastructure and a security platform team dedicated to driving it forwards. And we still kept our uh, enabling teams going out, working directly with the teams to get them forwards. And we introduced team, team APIs. And we're, as, as per the slides earlier, we're still on that journey. 
It's uh, something that we're, we're working towards right now. And we also introduce Backstage. I don't know if anyone uses Backstage. Uh, um, great, great tool, or great, a great framework, should I say, for bringing all your documentation into one place. Um, <clears throat> so creating a service catalog, we, we, we took the um, tech radar um, from another great consultancy that's out there that does that. Um, the, uh, the SLOs, SLIs, we brought that, brought that all together in one place. And one of the other things, and I'll come on to it in a minute, we introduced Dora Metrics. And um, yeah, so, so that's started to have a really positive effect, right? The ADRs are now, are now there for people to discover. We actually have done a little hackathon where we use generative AI to review a PR and then, and then post in the ADRs that that may not be adhering to, which is quite fun, but not, not, not live yet. Um, but um, this, but then you start getting into some of this, right? So <clears throat> this statement here, I, I can never remember it off heart, so I'm gonna read it. You can think, um, you think people have scar tissue, you should see organizations, each time there's a disaster, they create a process to prevent the future disasters of that type. Eventually they create a thick layer of, of these processes that prevent them from moving, and then they die. Um, <laughs> so, so that's what, Clearbank's a bank, right? So, and there's a lot of things, uh, many other banks, has, and I, I, I've never worked in a big bank, but there's a perce perception of big banks, and, uh, and, they, and they maybe start lots of incubators and startups to try to uh, work around this, but it's a perception that maybe they are, they've got lots of processes in place, right? And Clearbank, we desperately want to avoid that because we're an innovator and a startup, and uh, well, not startup anymore, sorry. We're an innovator and we're in the fintech community. So, um, so how do we get there, right? To avoid, um, we've got a team APIs. How do we just stop creating more process? We, we need to operationalize this, communicate the ways we're working, get people bought into them. I think in the last talk we talked about communications a lot. We need to get this um, into the right place, right? Um, so these are, some of, these are some of the things we're actively doing opposed to necessarily um, necessarily done. Um, so how do we get across? What is, what is our mission? What, what is our definition of success? Um, how, how do reduction in cognitive load how do we measure productivity in our teams, right? These are some of the challenges that we have to operationalize these team APIs to get people understanding what, what the direction we're going in the teams um, and move forwards. Um, and at the moment, what we've done and is focus heavily on metrics. And I know this, this is a, as one of the things there in quotes, which is a, uh, as something I don't want to get into the debate of about a certain productivity report. But um, <laughs> but um, I don't don't uh, tweet me or anything after about it. But um, but uh, we we are focused heavily on how do we get the metrics in place? How do we like we're we're a team size now where qualitative data is helpful, but we need quantitative data as well to validate that. And, and we've got, we need to get in place like some standard agile metrics, that's, that's fine. But actually, what else can we do? So um, we've, we've got our Dora metrics, uh, we've got all our failed releases, we've got, so every, every data point on our cycles, all our tooling, we try to put, um, event in off of every, every bit of tooling we've got so we can capture and report on that in the same way you would do in, if you were writing software for any operational team and trying to drive off operational efficiencies. So this is where we've introduced our DevX teams as well to try to help focus on this. And uh, so far this is really working well and we're, we're going in a good direction. And um, I think it's helping with the adoption of team topologies because it just connects it all up and it helps us deliver the message of we've 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 done this and this is the outcome of it, right? And and or this the adoption of that enabling team or that that, a, that API change that we've made to a team that's had this value when we've done it. Right. So I am ahead of schedule. So. Uh, I'll waffle on for a bit more. Um, so um, here on, so here we go to the last slide. Um, 
So Dunbar's Laws, these, these are kind of my, this is just my download of like the steps we've been through in conclusion is like we created enabling teams and I think you should start actually doing that quite early on in your journey as a startup. Um, costs, if costs allow, but even if they don't allow, like create the concepts. Um, we've kind of create, focus on clear documentation like for anything like communications and documentation is 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 much more powerful than the act of just doing it because when you start getting up up here it, you'll need you'll you'll need that 10 times more um your your clear teams apis i think they've been really valuable um we we kind of did some of this the wrong way around and uh, if we had done them things, we got team APIs in before we had just started putting platform teams in and, and, and cracking on, we could have had a much better success. The one thing I just called out here is onboarding training, like so important as you scale up, like now that early, get that in place. So when you scale, um, it's something that is just pure repetition. Uh, there's a clear boot camp that you go through how you work, how you work as a team, rather than how the industry does. Um, uh, ongoing marketing, just keep repeating that message. Uh, there's something about seven to nine times you should, you should get communications out there to make them successful. Like, I think you need to double it and, and add free. Like, it's, uh, it's really important that you land that message. Um, and then, and then, as you start getting even bigger, I think the tooling is is critical. It's it, uh, the framework itself and the people. And I know there's the finished viable platform kind of conversation in that, but um, it really does help the tool, the tooling, and having people come to a central place for their daily activities uh, is is a key element. Like if they're if if you've got loads of tooling scattered around the place, it's not helpful. Like they've got to come to one place that you can use almost as a marketing tool as well, like have a little banner across the top that like, delivers your new daily, daily message. And lastly, and I think this is the last one, but I think you could put this at any point because I think it's just good behaviors is measure your success. Don't, don't just assume success um, because you've adopted a framework, like measure it, make sure that it's something that you can stand to both for both for your senior members of the organizations and and uh, your team because um i since i've started measuring all of these things that we've done like i've been able to explain to our exco why we've done it all and if i had done that the other way around i could have actually taken them on that journey a lot better and actually now i'm able to say well clearbank on the dora metrics is an elite high organization like that's a great that's a great thing to have a conversation about and and therefore give me more money like um so so it's this really key elements so, so um i am oh no there you go i waffled on just enough time so thank you very much uh for